One, two, three, four. Okay, great. I'm going to open up and get a wireless microphone just in case there's a rat. Okay, so thank I'm you, Roger. I'm going to bother you just a little bit longer here. Okay. Wow, well, that seems really loud all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to be that loud. Um, so I'll just keep pushing it away from me. It's okay. Um, so staff wishes to engage an artist or artist team to work with the, st with the stakeholders and ACOM to help broaden the Bayland stakeholders and the public's understanding of the definitions of public <coughs> art, especially through social practice and environmental focus. Two, to engage the public in a temporary art making process that is aligned with the programming and educational ed uh, initiatives of the Baylands. And three, to collaborate with ACOM and city staff to gather appropriate input and feedback at these engagement events with the community to ensure that the public art element of the BCCP captures the feedback from stakeholders and adequately explores the many options available throughout the site. So here I have just a few examples just to show perhaps the types of artists and installations that we're imagining could take place on a temporary basis and could provide this great opportunity both to educate the, um, the stakeholders at the Baylands about what kinds, you know, thinking about public art beyond just the standing sculpture, um, and also really engage them in that, in that discussion. So um, this piece is by Stacy Levy. This was done in Japan. It's 600 stems of painted fire, styrofoam buoys mounted on top of 18 foot tall bamboo poles. The stems mark the area that should be vegetated with willows to hold the banks and create a habitat along the river. At the end of the project, the buoys were replaced with plant material. Uh, Marco Casagrande, sandworm. So this is a piece made of willow, not so different than the Patrick Dougherty piece at the art center. Um, but a different idea about using natural materials that are suitable to that kind of natural environment and then would degrade over time. That is amazing. What's the size of that thing? The previous one? Yes. Uh, I don't have the scale of it, but wow. with the inset, you see there's a human yeah. standing in there. So I would estimate that's a good 50 feet long, something like that. Maybe more, it's, it's a whale. Well, that may be another way to put it. <laughs> um, the windmill project, this was a project in Vail, Colorado. Um, a landscape-based installation that directly renders the behavior of the wind into a living body of light with small LEDs. And this is one of our now former Carberly artists, Linda Gass. And this is a project she actually did at Cooley Landing um, called Living Art. Um, the blue plastic survey whiskers marked the former shoreline of the San Francisco Bay. And then they replaced um, the flags with some native rushes. So the idea that then you would have native plant material that would mark that original shoreline so it could be continued to be used by educators. This is a project by Future Farmers, Soil Kitchen. Um, over the course of six days, the Soil Kitchen social-based practice or project encompassed a series of community soil testing and consultations by the Environmental Protection Agency scientists, free workshops, educating the community about urban farming, green energy, composting, and soil, and offered free soup in exchange for soil sam samples from their neighborhood. Uh, this is Michael Singer. Uh, neglected and overgrown for many years, Singer's, Singer created pathways and plantings. In, uh, Singer interacted with the multicultural community to create a place that has a shared meaning. This is um, Spencer Finch. This was a, a big project in New York. Uh, I guess it's still up. I had thought it was down. It says it's going to be up through May 2018. Mm -hmm. A 1 to 100 scale recreation of a 760 acre protected inaccessible section of Redwood National Park. Mimicking the topography of the National Park, the trees stand 1 to 4 feet tall. On display through May 2018, after that the trees will be uh, rehoused or planted. Uh, Eve Mosher, this is a project um, in a Whole Foods in New York. Um, for every 500 
<clears throat> bags used at the Chelsea Whole Foods One Native Plant uh, is planted in the installation. The installation was created from, from almost 400 recycled bags sewn into little plant bags. So that's the inset you see on the bottom where she's turned them into plant bags that then are later distributed and replanted. Um, so this just to give you a, a little better sense of the types of art engagement that we're looking to and that that artist would also work with the consultants to figure out what the best way to then gather input would be. Um, so uh, at this time, staff is recommending that the Public Art Commission approve the reallocation of $10,000 that was initially earmarked for social practice artists to engage the public as part of the Public Art Master Plan um, and put it toward this project. So if you recall, we did use one of those allocations to hire a mobile arts platform. And the second allocation was never used. Um, and so we were um, hopeful that we could use that $10,000 to bring an artist in to engage in this process. So just to be clear, that's mm -hmm. that 10000 covers not the work itself. It would. It would. Yes. So we're not going to get something as large as the willow sculpture, but it could cover something like this, the soil sample kind of thing, or a lot of these smaller projects. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you know, if we came up with something that was fabulous and a little bit more, we would certainly come back to the commission with that. Well, you just read my mind because I feel mm -hmm. like um, something impactful in that location. I mean, we do just have the new golf course, so I can't say that it's been a neglected area of the right. city, but it certainly would be um, a place to look that people would be interested in seeing art out there, certainly mm -hmm. like of this, of this type. Mm-hmm. I think this is a very forward-looking uh, mm -hmm. project. I, I really applaud you for that, to get out in front of it. Um, and possibly later we could always allocate more funds for the temporary art that goes in there because mm -hmm. some of the examples you showed were, I thought were very good, mm -hmm. uh, very interesting that would go along with that. And <clears throat> I can't say that I've been to the Baylands a lot, but uh, I think to put public art out there would be great. I would also just like to, because you, you touched on the, the funding for a potential future project. So this would help with the master plan. We would have, um, we would have a temporary project, but it would also call out opportunities for future projects. And we do have some in lieu funds that have come from one project in that corridor. There are some other pending projects. And so part of um, the recommendation in the master plan came out of this idea that if if a developer out there was going to pay in lieu, that they had an inkling of what those funds might go towards supporting. And so it really does help us build that case um, for the in lieu fees and that they will impact that same area. So um, we do have some funding in that bucket as well. Can, so um, this is maybe a basic thing, but can you just clarify mm -hmm. the what exactly is happening in the Bayland? So is it that they are conducting a master planning effort? Is it that they've already got a plan and they're for a larger project and this is gonna be 1% funds? Help me understand how this relates to the 1% uh, for, for public and municipal initiatives. Um, because this is, it's a conservation plan. They're not actually, there's not construction. So there aren't percent for art funds tied to that. Um, there were percent for art funds tied to some of the Baylands work when they re when they opened those trails in that section of the park recently, and with some of the other projects that are taking place in the Baylands. Um, so this would be it, it's not driven by the CIP percent for art, the Muni percent for art, because it's con for, uh, conservation not new construction, like they're not going to rehab that building or something like that. Right, so the percent for art funds don't apply to plans. It applies to construction projects. Right. So because this is... This is the planning part. This, Yeah, this this is essentially their master plan for the Baylands for the next 15 years and beyond, and we want to make sure that public art is considered in part of that plan and, and overlaid. Um, and since in our master plan it was called out that we ought to have an art plan for that area, this was a way to do it more efficiently. Since we're already engaging those, um, those stakeholders 
and we have somebody writing the plan, right. if we could bring in an artist to help with that engagement and help with the education of those stakeholders, okay. thinking about public art in a broader sense. So this is the concept that is, and what we're, we'd be funding it, of embedding an artist w within a public works context. And what's the, um, the time frame over which we would spend the $10,000? Like how, how long is their process? And what do you expect that we would be getting in terms of how many hours of someone's time, how much of it is their time versus what they'd actually produce as a work of art? Well, that would really depend on what they're what they're doing. Is it more object based, or is it multiple engagements? Is it more of a if they're there physically engaging the public at multiple events? So, or is it that they're building something? So, what does what does staff? Do you have a vision of what you want to see it used for? If you if you were to make a decision to, or, or you want to def, just def, <clears throat> defer, like help understand like the, would you rather see, I mean $10,000 is not a lot of money. No. And so would you rather have someone really in a concerted way spending their time to kind of inform the process for the master planning uh, as opposed to creating something where it's with not much money? Um, I, I think the primary thing is to engage the stakeholders and engage the public in some sort of art making, whether it's social practice or whether it's actually building something. Um, and it would need to take place this spring because they're looking to complete this plan by December, so at the end of the year. So we want to make sure we gather, we get that input, we've done that education this spring so that it can, it has time to get baked into that plan. Of course. Any other questions or comments? Um, if we did not do this, where would you see the funds being allocated? So I, I, I think that the mobile art thing was, was awesome, but if, if there, are there other things where you'd see this, other needs where you might allocate this if, if you're making a call? Um, we, I mean, we have other funds sitting in the CIP, so there, there's nothing urgent requiring those funds. Um, they've been sitting there since we were in the master plan process, and we haven't unearmarked them or done anything else with them. So we thought it was a logical way to move them. And is the um, the folks, do you have anyone in mind to, to bring on or, or we'd sort of do, do a call, like how would we find who's gonna? Because of the need, because it's a small commission, we would probably go out to several just local social practice artists uh -huh. and ask, you know, have some conversations and ask for some basic concept proposals. Got it. It'd be interesting to have a couple of artists that who do mm. smaller projects, but maybe a couple of different examples of different environmental art pieces. Um, so yeah, that might, I don't know if it's gonna say like two four thousand two at five thousand or three at you know thirty five. Um, that's interesting. Uh, my, th I think you're going to get more, like, this is a longer term thing for the vision of the Baylands. And I mean, I think we should discuss it, but my, my preference would be more of a consultative engagement thing rather than getting another temporary thing that's there for a week. I don't think any of the artists made any money for the, you know, uh, and so, uh, to yeah, to, to make it work. Um, so you should set the commission's expectations in terms of what, how you guys see this money being spent. To Nia's point, like, so it could be, I mean, help us understand. That would be helpful. Um, I, I wouldn't recommend going less than 10,000. The thing with code art was that, that those installations were only supposed to last 72 hours and basically were, were <laughs> mother hand and watched. Um, this, you, you want an artist who's a little more used to dealing with the public and talking about different types of public art. Um, most of the code art um, teams were not necessarily that. You know, we were reaching out beyond artists, and I and I do really recommend that we have an artist and a, a seasoned artist um, working on this project because they're going to be able to give the master planners better input, and they will have a clear understanding of what types of possibilities can take place here, which is really what we want out of them, too. So kind of like an artist in residence. Yes. Ish is what we're looking mm -hmm. at. Okay.
Uh, one last question. What's the scale of the budget for the master plan for the, what the, do you have any sense of what? It, I've forgotten. <laughs> I mean, is it I knew hundreds when of they thousands? wrote the call. No, it's not hundreds of thousands. It's 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 <laughs> by planning standards, it's fairly modest. Okay. But I can get back to you on that. Okay. The other thing, too, I was curious: is there a theme, or is it just a generalization? Like, is there? Is it? Should I'm assuming it should be related to the Baylands in some form, or that? Is that? Yeah. Do you mean the the artists that we do? The or artists the, that we commission? No, no, so the artists, but, the, but like the, what they decide to do with the 10,000 in terms of their project. It, it, needs to, it needs to be suitable to the Baylands environment. So okay. it would need to be environmentally based, whether it's working with the water, or with the plants, sure. but engaging the community there in conversation that's suited to the Baylands. Right, that's what I want to right. yeah, okay. I just wanted to say, well, so just in hearing like excellent questions and comments and more information. This is totally awesome. This is really great. I my personal um, input two cents is that um, it be considered that maybe the art has a like a lesson to the community of like you know in light of the plastic bags at Whole Foods like just some larger message to teach just also to appeal to all human beings, not just people that live in Palo Alto, but you know, I I, I respect all of them, but I, I just I really like the ones with the undercurrent of message and or mm -hmm. conserva conservation um, are placed in this world, and it, you know, it, as you're looking at people and evaluating social practice artists, you know, those that have something to say, I I would be inclined to favor for this mm -hmm. type of project for that's us. Right. And that's Like with um, Linda Gass, I do know that she's done a lot that's relating to the Baylands specifically in terms of like um, giving really concrete examples of connection. And so it was that was kind of my question about um, connection. Mm -hmm. So thank you for bringing that. I move that we allocate ten thousand dollars for Baylands artists and residents. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, that's our action items for tonight. Uh, now we have a brief discussion and summary of the uh, joint meeting we had with council a few weeks back. So just in <laughs> full disclosure, you know, these, these are really a compilation of Nadia and my notes. So if you <laughs> if you remember something differently or we've got something wrong, um, please let us know or feel free to um, make that known to the commission. So um, they are not meant to be a, a full um, recording of everything that happened there. Uh, but overall, I will say there you know there was a lot of interest in murals, both our existing ones, which did um, we ended up in a lot of conversation about that, but also a lot of interest in trying to do new murals, so that policy came up. Um, and overall, we saw a lot of love for public art and a lot of praise for the work of the commission and that you know good work is coming out and. You know, it was it was all very very positive, um, and I look to you all to jump in with any other observations or comments you all have. Um, I just want to comment. I thought that we covered a lot of information. We presented a lot of material um, to the council, and they were uh, very receptive. And they had great questions. They seemed to be thrilled with code art, mm -hmm. um, happy with the benches. Um, of course, very happy about the tunnel at Cal Ave, and they asked questions about tunnels, and and we discussed that a bit. And then um, they also, as Elise just mentioned, talked about murals in the city and their love of the Greg Brown murals. Um, those are my comments. I thought it was a good evening. I mean, as, as a takeaway, I think that um, I think about the success of Code Art, and I, I sort of thought about it in terms of a way to 
test pilot, if you will, mm -hmm. different locations uh, with something that can be done relatively quickly. And I think it's, um, we need to think through the funding model and the locations for to do more permanent installations uh, that would sit in some of those unexpected places because I think people really like them. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't think it's easy, but I think uh, I'd like for us to maybe put on the agenda or on our next retreat, talk about the ways to fund and execute on projects that would uh, cover them. It's one of the things that uh, uh, Council Member Holman talked about a bunch, and I think I know other people were receptive to the idea. Thank you, Jim. I agree. <laughs> Any other um, comments or thoughts? Um, there is a point here about light uh, that we've ta we talked about once, and uh, at least clarify. So this is something that Commissioner, uh, or rather, uh, Council Member Holman mentioned that they should receive some complaints. And just so you folks are aware, the th uh, I had a follow-up discussion with her just on a meeting in the street, and we talked about. Um, a concern and just confirmed that in fact the visa building sits in a corner where there's no residential housing on, on any of the sides uh, and that the one place where it may have been a potential issue is what's called the burn-in period when they're testing the lights and the intent from the staff was for Charlie Gaddick and the Articus to do it during the day and he did some of it at night so you can imagine a bunch of like crazy strobing lights uh, and that may have been something had someone seen it I would have complained like what the heck did you guys install uh, not understanding that it was a one-time event as the installation was being tested um, and the other thing to bear in mind uh, is that the light installations are governed by building code um, and that the piece on the visa building complies with the relevant building code. Um, so, Can so I just add one thing? So I was there the other night um, and ended up, I parked right across the street and all the interior lights to the building were on and actually those are a lot bright, broadcast a lot more light than than the artwork does, because the artwork's really diffused. Um, and I almost took a picture of it, and I didn't. But um, anyway, but it was something I noticed the other night when I was there. Yeah. Yeah. So I, was, I didn't get to attend, but I just was noticing that um, Council Mendebois mentioned that it would be nice to um, he encouraged us to look for public art opportunities throughout the city mm -hmm. and not just the downtown area, which I think we do, but it just brings to the point that I don't know how if we're how well we're still doing or what we can do better about promoting the art that we have in our collection because I, I do think people see it, but I don't think maybe are we, he's only one person out of all the um, commissioners, but um, at the council, um, so it's just something to think about. Because um, I know, Jim, you were working on um, some things, and I don't know where we stand on that, but it would be great to, I think, think about it in the new year again, about how we're... Which, um, which things are you referring to? You're definitely? creating a little app. Oh, the app. the app. Yeah. We should... But. So, um, and this is a little bit off agenda. Can, maybe we can add this for the next time, to, and I can give a little update on, on thinking there um, for next month's meeting to talk about mobile stuff. Um, the approach that I was thinking of, I think, isn't appropriate. I think there are some better solutions um, for us. Also, on our website, you can find all the public art placements, yes. correct? I, I think the idea was to do it. On the fly. In, well, just in, in context. Um, okay. So, yeah. Right. Um, and I, I will say not to get out too off tangent, but um, so I live near Mitchell Park, and sometimes I'm walking um, to the library um, from San Antonio Road, and I will see people, you know, running through the park, but nobody really stops to look at the art. And so it's one of those things that, you know, I just want to figure out what are we doing to help kind of get it, have it more visible. Because I think art sometimes is visible, but sometimes it's really, it's, it's just not. Mm -hmm. So and I think we have a great collection that we should share and promote. All right. Well, I see pens moving over there, so duly noted. Uh, <laughs> um, I think that's a, a wrap for tonight. Uh, thanks, everyone. Our next meeting is on February the 15th.
Um, and good to see everybody. Thank you very much. Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.